In today's video, we're going to be taking a look here at the tropics. We do have Hurricane Nigel as well as two areas of disturbances to talk about. We're also going to be diving in to the upcoming pattern, of course, where we do have a lot of storminess, particularly along the eastern seaboard where nor'easters and some tropical activity are possible. So a lot going on there. And then the temperature pattern is going to be a big roller coaster as we see cooler temperatures for about the next five days and then a return of the summer, if you will. Uh, where we're going to see warmer temperatures return here to the eastern and central states for quite an extended period of time in the long range. So we're going to be talking about all of those things in today's video. But before we do, be sure to check out Prestige Weather in the description and pinned comment down below. Uh, we do early access to our seasonal and monthly forecasts where we do have a winter forecast. I think it's like our third update coming up very, very soon over there. And that's going to be for about a week or two available there exclusively. So you're going to want to check that out. We also do weekly consulting calls and other consulting services within that community. So be sure to check it out in the description and pinned comment down below. It's only five bucks a month. Let's get into things, and as you can see, we're taking a look here at Hurricane Nigel, first things first, and this one is a pretty strong hurricane at 85 miles per hour. Um, we, we are going to see this one move pretty much northward and then take an eastern curve there through the midweek into the late week, where it's going to become a post-tropical cyclone at about tropical storm status and head towards potentially Iceland. That would feel more like just a typical stronger low pressure system, most likely if it was to hit there as a post-tropical cyclone. Uh, they are used to quite bad storms up there, of course, but this would be a particularly bad one, and we will continue to track that situation. That would be about Monday time frame, I'm assuming. Timing can change, obviously, when we're taking a look at that long of a outlook but that is kind of a good estimate at this point in my opinion monday time frame into perhaps tuesday now as we take a look at the entire seven day graphical tropical weather outlook we can see there is a code yellow offshore of the southeast coast with a zero percent chance of development over the next two days but as we take a look at this next seven days we do have a 30% chance of development. So that does start to increase with time. We do see this really, really intense code red over here, still a 0% chance over the next 48 hours, but we are gonna see that tropical wave move off of Africa into what we call our MDR. And that's short for main development region. Uh, and that is because that is the main development region of tropical activity. So we do see most of our tropical systems come from this area. And then sometimes we get these homegrown systems like you see here near the East Coast or near the Gulf Coast. You'll see them develop sometimes. But for the most part, this main development region is a really, really key area for development. We do see a 70% chance of development over the next seven days. So this is continuing to increase kind of as I was alluding to a couple of days ago. So we should see this one continue to kind of increase. Usually from here, we'll either see it die down and start to drop a little bit, or we'll see this percentage continue to rise until it just eventually develops. So it can go one of two ways, but when we're looking at mid to late September in the main development region, odds are kind of stronger in the favor of development. So that is what we will be watching for. Now let's just dive into the upcoming pattern. As you can see, we do actually through the day today have a little bit of a low pressure system near the kind of New England area where we do have some storminess taking place here for New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, even Massachusetts there in Eastern Canada as well, of course. Mostly quieter outside of that for a lot of the United States. As we reach Wednesday timeframe here, September 20th, we start to see some more storminess building in here for the Northwest, the Rockies, uh, kind of the, the West in general there for California and Nevada. Uh, once we take a look at the central states like the Midwest and the Plains, we do see some more thunderstorm activity there as well. And then for the Southeast, mostly Florida there, we do see some thunderstorms prevailing through the day today. So multiple areas dealing with this type of activity. Once we reach Thursday, September 21st, we do see a lot of storms for the Northwest through into the Plains, the upper Midwest here. So we see these areas dealing with some storms uh, kind of just all around. For the Southeast, we still see this pocket of activity and Perhaps this is where we expect our tropical wave to potentially develop there. We'll be watching for that throughout this model run, of course. Let's keep going, and by the time we reach Friday, yeah, I think it's pretty evident that that is that tropical development that's uh, potentially going to take place. We do see this kind of far-stretching wave of tropical activity for South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia there. This is going to need to be talked about, and this just suddenly popped up. So definitely going to be something new to talk about uh, over the coming days. 
Uh, as we take a look at the Rockies through the Northern Plains, we can see that there is some snowfall here for Idaho and, and uh, Wyoming. And this is kind of midday. So we're starting to get to that point where some daytime snowfall is becoming possible for those mountaintops. And every single year I kind of note this, but this is a sign of what time of year we're in. And always, always a reminder of the upcoming winter uh, that is really, we're, we're knocking on its doorstep. As we take a look here at the upper Midwest and some of the southern plains, we do have some thunderstorm activity here for states like Oklahoma, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, uh, Iowa, Wisconsin, Minnesota, even the upper peninsula there of Michigan as well dealing with some of this. So activity is really prevailing here on this model run particularly. By the time we reach Saturday, September 23rd, we can see a 999 millibar low pressure center there developing. And this is bringing some storminess here for states like Minnesota, Wisconsin, the Dakotas, Nebraska, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, we're seeing just a lot of thunderstorm activity. Still some back end activity for states like Montana and Wyoming where there is some snowfall there mixed in as well. We do see this tropical wave kind of offshore of South Carolina and it's bringing storminess all the way up through into the mid-Atlantic as you can see the Delmarva, Maryland, Pennsylvania, even into New Jersey, we're seeing some storms as a result of this kind of system. Hasn't developed into anything too crazy but could be a tropical wave that brings rainfall for a pretty extended amount of time. Sunday, September 24th here, we can see that there is kind of just this line or wave, if you will, of thunderstorms taking place all the way from down south, like Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, northward through into the upper Midwest, like Iowa, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, and even into south central Canada there, where we're seeing a lot of thunderstorms and showers around. As you take a look out west, though, we are quite quiet at this point. It's really the eastern seaboard and those more Midwest areas dealing with some of these storms. By the time we are reaching Monday, September 25th, we can see that a lot of the east and the Gulf states are seeing some thunderstorms and showers, depending on how far north you are. I'm guessing that Texas into the deeper south is likely to be thunderstorm activity, Florida as well. And then as you head further north from there, it's more likely that it showers uh, this time of year, especially uh, considering potential temperatures. Tuesday, September 26th, we could see that these storms are still around. So this is going to be kind of a long-term storm. We could see a stronger storm approaching the Pacific Northwest that's going to bring some precipitation to Washington, Oregon, and California, aka the entire western seaboard there. By the time we reach Wednesday, we could see it kind of dies down from south to north here. We still see Oregon and Washington dealing with some thunderstorm activity and, and potentially showers there, but really um we're quieting down and i think this storm has gone ahead and moved to the north of everywhere by the time we're taking a look at this point as well we can see that the great lakes the ohio valley southeast into the mid-atlantic and even the northeast are seeing a storm system move through here so the east is a little bit more active and then finally here for thursday we see a little bit of a quieter pattern outside of the northeast here and then a little bit of the northwest i mean if you kind of pinpoint these areas it's really really quiet outside of here and then maybe florida so getting a little bit quieter to close out the month of September could be a big possibility. Now, for the total precipitation, no surprise here that we see the Pacific Northwest dealing with some above average activity. And it's going to be the same story here for the Northern Rockies into the Northern Plains and then back down through the Southern Plains here and the upper Midwest. And then the entire Eastern Seaboard here dealing with some above average precipitation perhaps. Now, we're not going to dive into it, but the color codes are on the bottom and you can find your location there kind of pinpoint the exact amounts for your location. But as a rule of thumb, we always use the reds as the above average amount, and that's gonna go for most areas, although averages vary very widely across the nation. But that is a good rule of thumb for a national average of precipitation over a 10 day period. Now for the temperature pattern here, we're starting on the middle for some reason. What we see right now is we do have cooler temperatures along the east and it has been quite pleasant. There is an area of warmth around the plains and then we have this kind of cooler air mass along the western seaboard of North America here as a whole. And this is a very, very potent negative PNA. And what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and encourage this warmth to continue surging into not only the central states, but the eastern states. And we are going to see this cold come to an end as a result of this negative PNA out to the west. And that stands for Pacific North American Oscillation. And this is a huge driver in what we see across the entire nation here. Um, we've used this tool or teleconnection for so many years now, and it has just been a great, great tool to use to kind of indicate what kind of pattern you see. 
And as you can see, as we just play through just a couple of days, you start to see that pattern really build in that I just mentioned. We see the cold holds on until about the weekend. So we could see this entire week be for the most part cooler along the eastern seaboard, but then we get this warmth really prevailing for again, not only the central states, but also the eastern states here, seeing some of this warmth as well. And that is gonna bring kind of a second summer, if you will, but really, you know, we've been in pretty much a warmer pattern for the most part outside of the last few couple of warmer days we or cold, cooler days we've had for the most part. And we can see according to this European ensemble model, we continue to see these cooler temperatures along the west. That'll be the driving force behind all of this. And we continue to see the warmth surging into the east and the central states here all the way by October 4th. So this could be a pretty long term pattern. We are going to continue to track this daily. So be sure to tune in with us. We do upload every single day. So you can be sure to subscribe for those daily uploads. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Leave a comment down below and I will see you guys in the next video.